I made rack time. Rack because, you know, picking up the, uh, what is thrown as waste and thrown in the, on, in the streets, rack picker. I've been a singer all the way from Africa to Georgia. I carried my sorrow songs, sorrow songs, songs which were actually uh, expressive of my sufferings. Sufferings as a slave, as a worker, as a singer, as the colored. Now, the word Negro cannot be used. The gentlemen, you must remember, we have to use the word colored people. I carried my sorrow song. Why sorrow song? Suffering. I made ragtime. I've been a victim. I've been a victim of what? Victim of whom? The Belgians, the Belgians cut off my hands in the Congo. They lynched me still in Mississippi River or the state. I've been a victim of those people who cut off my hands in the Congo forest, Congo region. They lynch me still in Mississippi. All this is because the last few lines, again, repetition of the first three lines. I'm a Negro, black as the night is black. Black like the depths of my um, Africa. Look at the look at the pathos with which the poet is writing. Look at the agony. Look at the inbuilt uh, feeling of not anger, feeling of grief. I've been a worker. I've been a slave. I've been a singer. I've been a victim. All that still. I'm a Negro, black as the night is black, black like the depth of America. The word color, the color, the color black. See, see, uh, uh, don't you think this poem is full of emotions? Don't you think this is full of emotions? Not anger, not just sorrow. It's above all that. Some kind of feeling of suppression. Some kind of feeling of mm, uh, what we call the imperial domination. The colonizer's attitude to me. And I still and I still say it's my Africa. Look at the belongingness. Look at the belongingness. This poem, very simple poem. There's no, there's not a, there's, there's not a single word which you can't understand, which even a child can understand. But the emotion that this poem carried, they are very important. And those words constitute, those words contribute to the theme of the poem, the title Negro. Who is a Negro? He's, he's all. He's a worker. He's a slave. He's a victim. He's a singer. He's a rack picker. And he's black. Why I chose this poem, you know, just to help you come uh, to understand the pathos, the emotions, the selection of words. Now, uh, this is only a poem to tell you how this poem has been structured. Every poem, every poem has to be following a structure, a beginning, a climax, and an ending. The ending can be a repetition of the first few lines of the poem. In between, the theme is developed. I am a Negro. That theme is getting developed in the following lines. That I am a slave. I am a, uh, uh, I, I've am been asked to brush the boots of somebody. I have been asked to clean the doorsteps of someone else. And I have been a victim. I've been a slave, I've been a work. If I had not, I'm treated as a worker. They marginalized the section of the society. These are the small vocations. These are the small jobs done by, done by 
the economically not so good economically weak i would say racially subordinated and discriminated caste wise discrimination parallel parallel themes can be found in the writings of uh, indian poets as well so that's why i said in the beginning as we belong to commonwealth nations as we are members of the commonwealth nations which were once the colonies of the imperialist powers we had the same uh, that word colonial brothers we are all colonial brothers we are all developing so poets in these continents which are once colonies of uh, once colonies of uh, uh, the british empire right the, in their poems or in their writings you will be able to see this kind of pathos and very simple how i have been treated the structure begins with a beginning the beginning of a poem as it is given in that slide can be direct this is a direct beginning who are you i am an indian okay he is not disguising himself as a, a person uh, beginning can be disguised means uh, you are talking on behalf of somebody else you don't want to reveal yourself you don't want to reveal that you are a fellow indian or a fellow american or a fellow uh, british uh, british uh, uh, british or fellow australian okay or a fellow african etc or a fellow caribbean a poem can begin in a very casual hello how are you uh, uh, there are many examples given to you in the book but all those some of them are written by indian poets and uh, some british poets that's why i have chosen this particular poem it's not a casual beginning it's a direct beginning i am somebody it is not causal casual sorry it's not a casual beginning any informal beginning allah straight direct beginning it can be a conversational building as uh, in the poems of john dan metaphysical poets one of the metaphysical poets is john dan or andrew marvel they have a conversational sometime in some of those poems even some british poets uh, even these iliad has uh, uh, written some poems in a conversational uh, uh, as if a conversation takes place okay can be a dramatic beginning most of the shakespeare and sonnets Shakespeare and plays begin with a dramatic. Okay, beginning can be can it be anywhere? The beginning of a poem or the topic line or the key theme or the key line or what we call the central idea can be anywhere. It need not be just the a poem need not begin with the uh, thematic a, a line that conveys. the theme not necessarily the theme can be somewhere in the middle the theme can be somewhere at the end so i'm i'm going to go i'm going to write something and then at the end i may be giving the theme for you to understand okay what is this poem could all be about i come to the end and then the theme can be anywhere i put a question mark beginning can be anywhere normally beginning will be striking the theme okay Uh, so beginning can be direct beginning can be uh, casual beginning can be disguised many examples are given uh, uh, in your book too beginning can be dramatic and beginning can be just uh, scattered somewhere it can be scattered somewhere uh, in the 10th line of poem or 5th line of a poem it can be in the periphery it can i mean it, it cannot be just directly it can be implicit not explicitly uh, said theme can be implied only by stopping by the woods on the snowing woods are lovely dark and deep i have promises to keep woods are lovely dark and deep. Uh, okay i have promises to keep woods are lovely dark and deep robert frost an american poet right so structure can be direct structure can be disguised 
structure can be casual, structure can be conversational, structure can be dramatic, and the beginning can be anywhere. Normally, normally, from 50%, let me say, they will write right in the beginning, they will set the tone of the poem or the theme of the poem. Uh, I'll read one more poem. Why I'm not getting it? Are you getting it? I just stop. There's some problem here, I don't know why. Mr. Rupesh? Hello, Gary, you got the second slide. We are, uh, we can see structure. Ah. Yeah. We're developing slide. the team. Yeah, we can see uh, developing this team. No, we have not seen it yet. It's there? Your cursor, yeah, your cursor is. I, I, I'm not to move further. I don't know why. Problem with the system. Next topic, sir. Next month. The second slide. This is Sarish Tech. Ili. Ila. What the hell? Ili. 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 Click your title as a A poem can be structured around an experience, an object, an incident, a scene. Structure means how the lines are organized, how the beginning is made, how the ending is made, how the climax is actually shown. There are three different parts of uh, any poem or any piece of writing. The beginning, the middle or the climax and the end. Okay. A poem can be structured around an experience. Again, Tibur, an experience, personal experience, an object. For example, if you want to write something about trees, trees, about something about landscape or something about uh, wildlife, wildlife and and something about women's rights. An object, a creature, an idea about an incident that I have witnessed or I have experienced. And a scene. Incident is a happening and a scene is what you have witnessed. Okay? Incident can be highly personal. An object can be impersonal. An experience also is incident, seen, or experiential. Okay. Then, developing teams, it's not coming. It is not a helmet, you go because of the other click to add to it. I like a developing team. Well, in the game, first you click one, but I don't know. I want to step right first here and then go right. Developing the team, 
I can develop the theme using an image or a metaphor. What do you mean by an image? Yesterday I was telling you, an image is something which reflects, which reflects an object, a thought, an experience, an idea. A metaphor is one, uh, it is also a simile, a comparative. It, 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 it looks like something. I was telling you something about image and the symbol. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll give you a good example. Image is a physical representation of a person or an animal or an object. Image, what do you mean by image? Image is a physical representation of a person or an animal or an object. Before that, we should remember any poem or a poem is an inspired creation. It's a happening. Inspired creation. Inspiration. I get inspiration. I can't write on anything unless I get some kind of inspiration. But if I look at a, if I look at a, well, a peacock, I get inspired. If I look at a person of uh, eminence, I get inspired for some of his actions or for his knowledge of things, and then write. Poems can be built around an experience, an object, an incident, see. The beginning can be anywhere and the, the themes can be developed using an image or a metaphor. This example is given there in your book, The Thought Fox. The Thought Fox. If you want, I'll read it. It's on your, uh, it's in your book, page, page, page one. One minute. It's in your book. Ted Hughes. Page, page, page 16 of book two. If you have it, you can go through it. I imagine this, I imagine this midnight moment's forest. Something else is alive. Beside the clocks and loneliness and this blank page where my fingers move. I imagine this midnight moment's forest. Some, he, he's just writing something and he's not, it's a blank page of paper. He imagines there's something moving. Through the window I see no star. Something more near, though deeper within darkness, is entering the loneliness. The, 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 the poet is lonely. He is trying to write something. He is not trying to solve write something on a blank page and nothing is moving, but suddenly he gets the idea that uh, mm, something is moving and he's alone. Cold, delicately, as the dark snow, a fox's nose. Suddenly he gets the image of a fox. Suddenly he gets the image of a fox. He wants to write something. He is a blank page. He wants to perhaps draw something. Suddenly the fox comes here. The image of a fox comes there. A fox nose touches twig, leaf, two eyes serve a moment that now and again now, now, that now, and again now, and now, and now. See how we read? Sets need the thought, the fox, the image of fox appears, then he is able to draw, he is able to fill up the blank page, which was very blank till now, suddenly. The, 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 the image of a fox appears before him and then he's able to move his hand and then he's able to write something, he's able to draw something. Between trees and worriedly a lame shadow lags by stump and in hollow of a body that is both to come. Across clearings an eye, a widening, deepening greenness, brilliantly, concentratedly coming about its own business. Till within, with a sudden, sharp, hot, Stink of fox. It enters the dark hole of the head. 
the window is starless till the clock sticks, the page is printed. That's a very blank page before him. He is looking for some ideas here and there. What to write, what to, uh, what to uh, draw, or what to do on that blank page. He is looking for, uh, that, is, that is completely, his mind is dark. He is not able to see anything. He is not able to get any, any ideas. He is not able to get any thought. Suddenly the image of a fox comes to his mind and then he is able to scribble something here and there. Poetic composition is just like that. You may not have a beginning. You may not have an end. You may start from somewhere. You may start from somewhere. Developing the theme. The theme of this is, what is this? An idea. How to get it? It, it, it is blank. His mind is blank. His head is blank. He's not getting any thought. He's not getting anything to be written. He's not getting any idea either. Suddenly, the fact, the face of a fox appears before him. Then he starts. So any poetry, this is what I mean by developing the theme, the themes can be developed not necessarily in the beginning of the poem. The themes can be somewhere in the middle. As the first four or three lines or five or six lines may be just empty lines. Suddenly, some flow of thought comes. Suddenly, something strikes the writer and then there comes. Uh, uh, the, the meaning of this poem, it is Okay. The meaning, what I want to write about, the idea, what I want to write about, may happen suddenly from somewhere. The theme can be developed just when you uh, get an image or a metaphor. Oh, it is like this, it is like that. That's what your book says. A single metaphor or a single image may help you to fill the pages or to become creative. That's how you develop the theme. So the structure, while we are, when we are talking about developing theme, we are just trying to say something about the structure. Beginning. So beginning can be anywhere. That is a question I asked in the first that Beginning can be anywhere. And beginning can be in the beginning. The opening line itself, beginning can be in uh, uh, what we call the end or something like that. Okay. Now I, I'll read some more poems and then I'll get back to you. Today it is very difficult, I don't know why. Okay, I'll, I'll speak to you. Are you? Am I audible? 
Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible. It is there. Next one is a climax in a poem. Where will be the climax? The climax can be, what do you mean by climax? The climax is something to do with the zenith, the, the pinnacle of any idea of writing, the right, writing about any idea, the zenith. If you write a story, you can have a simple beginning and before ending, uh, 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 the climax is the height. Something very big happens. And, okay, uh, I, 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 I can't give you a, a simpler word for climax. Something which goes to height and then suddenly uh, something else happens. The climax will be always in the middle, somewhere in the middle, and not at the end. Okay. Uh, and uh, um, uh, your, your book says, the climax is very important when it comes to um, uh, writing dramatic poems. Lyrics okay. and uh, play, particularly when you write a play, when you write a poem, when you write a script for a film, the climax scene. We call it the climax scene, you know. The climax scene includes something suspense. We really do not know what's going to happen. It will it will reveal later. Okay. The climax in a poem is the turning point. It is there. The climax in a poem is the turning point followed by a denouement. Denouement means a partial slanting, a partial falling, a partial, uh, what we call, uh, partial disadvantage coming. It has reached. After that, a small fall. That's all. Partial. Uh, there are many poems given here. Before that, let me read. Uh, the same poem, uh, another poem by Charles Wells. Charles Wells. Right? The poem titled African Beauty. African Beauty. Are you able to hear me? Hello? Yes, sir. We are able to hear you. Uh, it, uh, it's a poem by Charles Wells. C H A R L E S C H A R L E S Charles Wiles, another African poet, W I L E S spelling. The poem is titled African Beauty. You you should be able to you should be able to tell me the theme, how the develop, how the uh, theme has been developed, and what is the climax in the poem. I will read the poem twice, okay, for your for your understanding. The sea is painted on her eyes and sand is sprinkled on her skin. Her waves of hair so soft to touch. Her mouth a cave. They wisp within. But wrecking cliffs, but wrecking cliffs are turned to roofs, soothed by the calm of summer lulls. And love, summer loves a love so warm it dries you out and lifts you with the wings of gulls. Beautiful lights. African beauty. Not Africa's beauty, 
African beauty. I read, the sea is painted on her eyes. And sand is sprinkled on her skin. Every word is an image. Every word is a symbol. The sea is a symbol. The sand is a symbol. Her waves of hair, so soft to touch. Her mouth, a cave, they wisp within. All this. Look at the climax. But, very important word, but. But wrecking cliffs are turned to roofs. Everything is beautiful about. But wrecking, wrecking cliffs are turned to roofs. R O O S T S. Soothed by the calm of summer. Lulls. In summer, we are all tired. Sweating. And love so warm, but summer loves and love so warm, it drives you out. Summer loves, summer loves, and love so warm, it drives you out and lifts you up with the wings of gulls. Again, twist. A turning point. The word but is very important. That's a turning point. Oh, everything is beautiful. The sand, but that's something not to go with that. Then again, comes down. Then again. And love so warm, it drives you out and lifts you with the wings of gulls. That will be every now and then, some kind of a twist. But before we reach a climax, there will be twist, twist, twist. Okay? Sense of wonder, sense of mystery. Many things will be there if it is going to be something about nature or if it is going to be something about our ecology. There is always a but in every context. It's always a but. I can be going on saying. It's a contrast. The African beauty, which is described in the first four lines of the poem, is contrasted with, but wrecking cliffs are turned to roots, soothed by the calm of summer lulls, and love so warm it drives you out and lifts you with the winds of gulls. That all, that's how you love to read. I read it again. But wrecking cliffs are turned to roots, soothed by the calm of summer lulls, and love so warm it drives you out and lifts you with the winds of gulls. Tan 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 tan. Rhythmic. There's some kind of a pattern. The last four lines. Uh, I, I'll read one more poem uh, to tell you where uh, you can find out where uh, the where uh, the climax lies, okay? Which lines actually, or which line gives you the climax of the poem? Uh, I'm going to read again another African poet only. Uh, okay. By most of you, the Senga, Lepole Seda Senga, or Chinu Abjibe. Who wrote, uh, you know, many novels, Man of the People, many such novels, okay? Things fall apart. Uh, it's a poem by Chinua Chiver, a Nigerian poet. The poem goes like this. I'll read it for you. No Madonna, no Madonna and child, no Madonna and child could touch that picture of a mother's tenderness. For a son, she soon would have to forget. The air was heavy with odors of diarrhea, of unwashed children, with washed out ribs and dried up bottoms struggling in labored steps behind grown empty bellies. bellies. Most mothers, most mothers, there had long ceased to care, but not this one. She held a ghost smile. Look at the word ghost smile. The smile of the ghost. Look at the image. She, she held a ghost smile between her teeth and in her eyes, the ghost of her mother's pride as she combed the rust-colored 
rust colored hair left on his skull, skull and then singing in his ears, began carefully to pot it. In another life, this would have been a little daily act of no consequence before his breakfast and school. Now she did it, like putting flowers on a tiny grave. Look at the, look at the, look at the climax. Look at the mood. No Madonna and child could touch that picture of a mother's tenderness for a son she soon would have to forget. She is a loss of a child. No Madonna and child could touch that picture of a mother's tenderness for a son she soon would have to forget. The air was heavy with orders of diarrhea of unwashed children. Look at the environment. Look at the diseases. Look at the weak child. Physically weak. The air was heavy with orders of diarrhea. Okay. Heavy with orders. Heaviness and weakness. Of unwashed children. Not properly washed. With washed out ribs. With washed out ribs. And dried up bottoms. Struggling in labored steps. Behind blown empty bellies. Bellies. Most mothers there, most mothers there had long ceased to care, but not this one. Many mothers have simply forgotten the children, but not this particular mother. She held a ghost smile. Between her teeth. She held a ghost smile between her teeth and in her eyes, the ghost of her mother's pride. The word goes with what? Death. A ghost smile between her teeth and in her eyes, the ghost of her mother's pride as she combed the rust colored hair left on his skull. And then singing in her eyes. How can you sing in her eyes? Emotions, cries, tears began carefully to part it. In another life, this would have been a daily, a daily, a little daily act of no consequence before his breakfast and school. Now she did it like putting flowers on a tiny grave. All those words are really something which uh, uh, you should know. How poets use words, how poets use images and things like that. And the climax is always. There's one more, one more poem. Why I read this poem was only to give you an example. Where does the beginning lie? Where does the end in a poem lie? In which lines, which lines in the poem bring about the end? So when you are writing a poem, you must develop the theme and you must have the theme in your mind. The theme can be anything. The theme can be personal also. The theme can be something to do with the societal values. The theme can be something to do with the moral values or systemic many things, you know. And then suddenly somewhere in the poem, you are giving a turning point turning point followed by a development and that's where the climax lies. You may be asking the question, should every poem have a climax? All poems, whether you want it or not, will have a climax. Any poem written by anybody. Any poet. Uh, I will read one more poem to tell you. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, God, for creating me black. Look at that. Highly personal. For making of me, portal of all sorrows, setting on my head the world. 
porter. I am a porter of all. I am a carrier of all sorrows. Like the porter van carrying all goods. I am a porter. I thank you, God, for creating me black, for making of me porter of all sorrows. I carry within me all grief, all sorrows, all pain. Setting on my head the world. I wear the centaur's hide and I have carried the world since the first morning. Since the first morning, God created heaven and earth, okay, on the very first morning, the day of my birth. Next line, sir. All of you should lead, sir. White is a color for special occasion. Black, the color for every day. And I have carried the world since the first evening. Work. White is a color for special occasions. What can be those special occasions? And black is a color for every day. Black is a color for every day. And I have carried the world since the first evening. I am glad of the shape of my mind, my head. I am happy of the shape of my head, made to carry the world, content with the shape of my nose that must sniff every wind of the world, pleased with the shape of my legs, ready to run all the heats of the world. How he is subjecting himself as a black? I thank you, God, for creating me black, for making of me portals of all sorts. Going on getting repeated. Going on repeating some three lines, what you call three lines. Okay? I, I, these three lines are getting repeated after every ten lines. I thank you, God, for creating me black, for making me or uh, making me making of me portal of all sorrows. Thirty-six swords have pierced my skin, my heart. Thirty-six fires have burned to my body, and my blood on all calvaries has reddened the snow, and my blood at every dawn has reddened all nature. Still, I am glad to carry the world, to glad of my short arms, glad of my short arms, glad of my long arms, glad of the thickness of my lips. I thank you, God, for creating me black. White is a color for special occasions. Black, the color of every day. And I have carried the world since the dawn of time. And my love over the world through the night, create the day. Please remember, my love over the world. This is the climax. My love over the world. Through the night, create the day. For whom? I thank you, God, for creating me black. Do you think? Do you think? That this poem is not without any element of pathos or agony or sorrow or grief or some kind of unhappiness or some kind of sadness. He 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 appears to be thanking, and he appears to be uh, he appears to be having a sense of belongingness to the community of. And I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I'm doing this somewhere. And my laugh over the world through the night creates a look at the opposites. My laugh over the night, over the world, throughout the night, creates the day. I do my work with all smiles. And that becomes a good, that becomes the reason for a very good morn or day or dawn. I thank you, God, for helping me. To be a portal of all sorrows. I thank you God. I thank you God. For creating me black. White is color for special occasions. Black the color for every day. I mean okay. Toiling day and night. The, the implied meaning you will be able to see. I don't want to describe it. If you read only, you will be able to understand. In in writing a poem, you may be using one or two words which may not be 
known to a person of a, a reader of some other environment. There's nothing wrong. But you are right. Your poem will have a climax. Your poem will have a denouement. Something. Somewhere after reaching the climax, you come to uh, the normal. Somewhere. Okay. And again, the climax need not be. Uh, the climax will be somewhere in the middle, not necessarily in the beginning. Okay. There are many such poems. Uh, I would request you to read some of these poems, uh, uh, African poems. Then you will know. And uh, there are long poems, there are short poems also. Yesterday I was referring to a poem by, again, Nigerian writer, dramatist, Nobel laureate, Willy Swinker. Telephonic Conversation. I promised that I would read it. Today I'm going to read it. The price seemed reasonable, location indifferent. <laughs> the landlady swore she lived off premises. Just the landlady was not living in that house. The price seemed reasonable, location seemed to be a little different, indifferent, not attractive. Environment was indifferent to me, means the environment didn't attract me. Praise was reasonable. You know, the price of what? Rent for a house. The landlady saw, she said, off premises. Not in the same way, she was to make the land owner, the house owner. Nothing remained but self confession. I told her, Madam, I want. I hate a wasted journey. I am African. I hate a wasted journey. I am African. Silence. Very important word, silence. Silence. Transmission of pressurized good breeding. Silence, transmission of silence, sorry, silence the transmission of pressurized good breeding. Voice when it came, lipstick coated, long gold rolled, it, ro, long gold rolled, cigarette holder reply, cigarette hold pipes, sorry, caught I was only. How dark? I had not misheard. Are you light or very dark? Button. B. Button. A. Stench. Of rancid breath. A public hide and speak. Red booth. Red pillar pox. Red double tear. Omnibus. Squelching tar, it was real, shamed by ill mannered silence, surrender, pushed, dis dumbfounded to beg simplification. Considerate she was, varying the emphasis, varying the emphasis are you dark or are you very light or very light? Revelation key. You mean like plain or milk chocolate? Her ascent was clinical, crushing in its light, impersonality. Rapidly wavelengths adjusted. I chose West African sepia, a tribe. And as an afterthought, down in my passport. Down in my passport, I am West African Sepia. Silence for spectroscopic flight of fancy till truthfulness change your accents. Don't know what that is. Like Brunei. That is dark. 
isn't it? Not altogether. Facially, I am Brunei, but madam, you should see the rest of me. Basically, basic, sorry, facially, I am Brunei, but madam, you should see the rest of me. Palm of my hand, soles of my feet, or a peroxide blonde, a mix. By sitting down, by, by sitting down has turned my bottom raven black. One moment, my love, sensing her receiver rearing on the thunder clap above my ears. Madam, I pleaded, would you rather see for yourself? Going on, Oscar, again. And most of the African writers have been writing more on uh, uh, a social theme and equally on public themes the the theme of the theme of discrimination discrimination in terms of gender discrimination in terms of color discrimination in terms of race discrimination in terms of economic status of the individuals discriminated in, uh, in terms of the ruling or the ruled class, etc., etc., et the colonizer and the color, uh, colonized, etc., et discrimination of all kinds. Discrimination of all kinds. That doesn't mean African writers have not written, uh, uh, have not, African writers, writers have not written anything about nature or anything about the environment. So you can write poems on nature. You can write poems on a personal experience or an incident or an object or an idea which you think needs to be, uh, which you think needs to be elaborated, needs to be put in words in the form of a poem. And that poem may have the strike, uh, the theme right in the first line or somewhere in the middle with a beginning and an ending. Now, how can that be ending? Next slide. I don't know. Ending can be rounded and open. Now, what do you mean by rounding, rounded ending? And what do you mean by open ending? It's all given there in your book. I'll be reading some. Ending. A rounded ending is one. Okay. A rounded ending is one which is a repetition of the opening lines in a poem. A rounded ending means the poem ends with a repetition of the line with which you begin the poem or the line with which it singular and plural. There are many examples given in but I would love to read some of those lines. I think you have the book with you because they are very good poems. Uh, forget about African or American or British. The concluding lines of Keats, John Keats, a romantic poet. Okay. Beauty is truth. Truth, beauty. It's all A, no, no on, and all you need to know. The, the, the rounded ending can be a summing up. It need not be repetition, but it can be a summing up. Beauty is truth. Truth, beauty. That's all. It's all E. E means you. You need to know. You, you know, sorry. It's all you know on and all you need to know. Again, another poem it is given. 
Here lies John with the rest, Johnson with the rest of the poets. But the best reader would thou more have known. Ask a story, not the stone that will speak that this can't tell of his glory. So farewell. Excellent lines. This, uh, this cannot be simply summarized and given. All these lines you have to read, 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 understand and comprehend on your own. Okay? And uh, the ending can be open as well. Opening, uh, there are many examples given here. One important poem by Second Coming by W.B. Yeats titled Second Coming. Turning and turning in the widening glare, the falcon cannot hear the falcon air. Things fall up, things fall apart. The center cannot hold. Mir Anaki is loosened upon the world. Turning and turning in the widening glare. The falcon cannot hear the falcon air. Things fall apart. The center cannot hold. Mere anarchy is loosened upon the world. The blood dimmed tide is loosed and everywhere. The ceremony of innocence is drowned. The pestered lack of all conviction. While the words are full of passionate intensity. Surely, some revelation is at hand. Surely, the second coming is at hand. Surely, some revelation is at hand. Surely, the second coming. Uh, this, this is a biblical, biblical uh, uh, this is a theological belief that God is going to come. Second coming of God. Okay. Surely, some revelation is at hand. Surely the second coming is at hand. The second coming. Hardly are those words out when I was image out of spiritus mundi. Troubles my sight. Some alien sense of the desert. A shape with a lion body in the head of a man. A shape with a lion body in the head of a man. A gaze blank and pitchless as the sun is moving. Its slow thighs while all about it. Real shadows of the indignant desert birds. The darkness drops again. But now I know. But now I know. That 20 centuries of stony sleep. Were wrecked to nightmare. By a rocking cradle. 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 Right? And what rough beast. It's our come. It's our come. Round at last. Slouches to Bethlehem to be born. Question mark. So how? So the ending can be rounded and the ending can be open. There are many examples given here. And uh, one more example. The ending also tells about the, it can be repetition as I said in the beginning. The woods are lovely, dark and deep. But I have promises to keep. And miles to go before I sleep, and miles to go before I sleep. These are very interesting, important, I mean, very good lines to be memorized. Even uh, uh, these lines are by the American poet Robert Frost. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promised us to keep. I miles to go before I sleep. The, the, the poet is compelled uh, uh, to uh, go back because he has a lot of work to be completed. Uh, he wants to enjoy nature, but his commitment to work, his commitment to his society, drawing back uh, from not enjoying further, he is becoming again uh, like any other worker. Which are lovely to it, but I have promises to keep. I have something else to do. I cannot stand here and then waste my time and enjoy the beautiful nature and the serenic beauty of nature. I can't do that because I have promised to stay to keep a mile to go before I sleep, a mile to go. Here sleep is, uh, uh, sleep, the word sleep refers to death. Okay? Uh, a, a philosophy. A philosophical ending. A mile to go before I sleep, a mile to go. There's a lot of time before me. 
before I breathe my last. So ending can be rounded and ending can be open. Uh, that's how uh, 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 the whole um, uh, book has been structured here. The, the book talks about the structure of a poem or structuring of a poem. The structure, I repeat, the structure can be anything. But every structure, every well-structured poem will have a beginning, will have a climax. I can call it the mid. And every climax will be followed by a denouement. Okay. And uh, uh, one more poem is given there in your book, On His Blindness by John Milton. Very, very interesting poem uh, by John Milton. Uh, 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 you must read it. Uh, 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 that's what example for denouement. Example for denouement. It reaches the climax, but suddenly there is a small fall. Descent. Is a poem is given in your book in your book on page 29. When I consider how my light is spent, on his the poem uh, is titled On His Blindness by John Milton, a British poet, an English poet. Well, uh, some 400 centuries ago, okay, 400 centuries ago. Uh, right. When I consider, he became blind when he was very young. After that only he wrote the two great epics, Paradise Lost and Paradise Regate. And some sonnets like uh, this, uh, right? Uh, on his blindness. When I consider how my light is spent, yeah, half my days in this dark world and white. And that one talent which is dead to hide, which is dead to hide, lodged with me useless, though my soul more bent on to serve there with my maker and present my true account, lest he returning child, so that he doesn't get uh, angry with me. He, he becomes blind even at a very young age. Half of his life has been spent only in darkness, without having the power of vision, without having the power of sight. And he say, well, it's more or less. If I just say I am blind, I cannot do that. Uh, it is just like hiding my talent. I am here to serve the master. Even if I am blind, I must be in a position to serve the master. And present before him when he comes, my true accountments, my true work and things like that. He's immediately asking a question out of anger. When he feels himself, when he feels that he is blind, he's asking, Are, I want to serve him. Why should God make me blind? Are, why should God make me blind? And why should he expect me to serve? And why should I serve? I have a mission to serve. I know that I became blind. Half of my life has been spent in darkness, uh, 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 a period when he has not been able to see, visually handicapped, blind. When I have been, last when I have been made useless by taking my power of vision. Suddenly, yes, that God exact, very important line, that God exact, day, labor, light, denied. He wants me to work. Does he want me to serve him? When he has denied him, when he has denied me of my vision, my seeing, when he has made me that God exact day labor, light it is light I have been denied of light I have been denied of seeing, I have been a uh, uh, vision, power of vision. It has been taken. I become blind. Why should God expect me to work? Does he? He's asking that question. But immediately, that's a climax. Something else tells him, hey, don't scold God. Don't don't expect, don't ask that question. God doesn't want anyone to work with 
something. God does not need either man's work or his own gifts. Who best bear his mild yoke? They serve him best. His state is kingly. Thousands that is bidding command, bidding speech, and post over land and ocean without rest. They also serve who only stand and wait. Beautiful. The climax is that life. That God exact day labor life. Some kind of a petty argument, a question. It's just like scolding. Are I have become blind. I want to serve him, H capital. But why did he make me blind? Does he want me to serve by making me blind? Some kind of a different attitude. Suddenly he changes his idea. Are God doesn't want you to serve. God doesn't want you to want to take back the gifts that he has given to you. God does not need either man's work or his own gifts. And there is a moral here. He who best bear his mild yoke, they serve him best. He, because his state is kingly. The kingdom of God is very big. Very serene, very pure. There are many people to serve him. You don't, fellow, you don't say that you are the only fellow who is there to serve. Why do you ask that question? Again and again. Again he expressed that God that God accepts day labor light questions. And suddenly there is a small fall in that agony, expression of agony. No, 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 it cannot be like that. God's kingdom is heavenly. God king, uh, God's uh, state is kingly. There are many people, Not uh, you are not the only person who is ready to serve. There are many people, but people who want to serve him must wait and serve. So this is the ending. The ending can be. The ending can be. Something open. Here is a poem which has a climax and a denouement. So uh, these are the different, I can call, I don't know whether I can use those words, uh, the stages in a poem. I don't want to use that uh, word stage, but you can say every poem will have a beginning, every poem will have a middle or climax, followed by a denouement, and then every poem will have an end. An end need not be the conclusion. The word ending is different from the word conclusion. I may end it with a question. I may end my poem again with a repetition of the first few lines. I may end with a, a, a statement. I may end a poem with an exclamation. I may end the poem with a request or with a command or with an observation which again can be a statement and therefore whenever you write a poem see that you have all these three i don't want to say stages okay stages only every stage is a progression from the earlier stage every stage from the beginning, I go to the climax. From the climax, I come to the ending. And maybe somewhere uh, the, the theme uh, lies in between. I open a poem. Then I proceed. I progress. Because to me and to everyone, I know writing is a process. Writing anything. Writing a short story. Writing a letter. Writing an epic. Writing uh, a novel. Or writing a fable. Or writing a, a, a ballad. Writing a small a limerick. It, it requires. It may have a beginning and an ending. In between. And all this will not be possible 
You cannot find a beginning. You cannot find an ending. You cannot find a unless otherwise you state, you design the theme on which you are going to write. The theme is decided by the writer. The theme can be, again I repeat, as said in, uh, in yesterday's class, the theme can be personal. The theme can be social. The theme can be uh, what we call um, public. The theme can be something uh, to do with uh, the nature, description of the nature, or contamin or pollution of the natural surroundings, anything it can. And in my next class, I will read certain lines. I, I'm not a great writer, I'm not a poet. I have created some lines just to make, don't accept them. Uh, thinking that I am a great poet or a creative writer, I'll just read and then see where the theme lies. What's that? Uh, what is a, a grammatical pattern? Is it a sentence or an exclamation or an interrogative uh, a question or uh, a suggestion? Okay can be or just an order, an imperative, a command. You can, right? And uh, now uh, another five minutes, I'll be uh, leaving, um, I'll be giving you for asking questions. Okay, five to 10 minutes. Uh, this, uh, this uh, the, the whole book is very, very uh, brief and short. It talks about the structure, structuring or the structure. And the three different, uh, I, I personally don't prefer you uh, uh, to using the word uh, stages. Anyhow, any writing is a process, therefore it will have different stages. Any question? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are here. We are listening to you. A any question from you? Uh, no, actually, I don't have questions for you. Uh, were you able to find any poem last night? Yes, uh, I have uh, read some some poems. Uh, uh, after uh, can, you, can, you, can, you, can you zoom that poem? Uh, maybe you can show the page of from that book, or even if it is in the Google search, you can, and we can analyze that poem to not not to know the meaning how a poem has been structured. That's all. Here I am not teaching you poems. Let me make it very clear. I am trying to highlight the different ways in which a poem can be composed. So if if for your project, paper six or whatever you call it, if for your project you are going to choose writing poems, your poems must have this one. Your poem must be having a theme, which can be anything. A poem must have a form, a dramatic form, a conversational form. I won't call it style. Or an informal way of, and your poem will have or should have a structure, a beginning, a climax, followed by what they call a denouement. Not necessarily, sometimes that will not be. Okay? And then ending. Start writing. You can, you can just start writing something about uh, uh, your own environment, your, your environment, uh, the environment nearby you. You don't have to go out of it. Or look at the stars at night and then just write. Please, one minute, one minute, a very important uh, caution I would love to give you. Don't think you must write or like X or Y. Not necessary. Not necessary. X or Y can be a model. X or Y can give you, well, some idea, no doubt about it. But composing, see, there are many, many songs. But how are you going to sing? Many notes. You can sing, uh, like Michael Jackson. Not all were able to sing like Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson was singing different. So, Singing is a lot, no doubt about it. 
Writing poetry is also an art. It's a process. And every time when you write a poem, uh, you will be you will be actually uh, not forced. You yourself will get be getting involved in refining, refining in looking at uh, refining by looking at substitutes for the words that you use, substitutes for the expressions that you use, substitutes for or uh, what we call rearrangement of the lines that you get. And no creative activity. Even if you write a short story, just don't write a short story for assignment's sake. Be serious. Become creative. The team may be common. Your team and my team may be common. But how well you are going to say, how differently you are going to say something about the same theme is where creativity lies. Right? Get my point. Are you able to follow what I'm trying yes, to say? Yes, yes, we are following. You don't, have, you don't have to model your writing on somebody else. Be original. Because even those who are great writers, they didn't have any models. They wrote on their own and they later became models to others. Similarly, writing, any writing, any piece of writing is a result of inspiration. Any piece of writing in any form in a poetic form, in a prose, in the form of prose, I don't want to use the word prosaic form, prosaic may be uh, having a different meaning, in, in, in prose form, not prosaic form, in prose form, may write. But the only thing is, how are you going to? Any writing, as I was telling you, is a result of inspiration, but not copying the inspirer. Right? Well, you may have somebody as a model, as a role, role model they call it, but you may have your own ways of saying something. It is creativity. It is not a job interview, right? It is creativity. You can write in any way you like. Right? Start writing, start writing. Because writing can be bettered. You can better your writing. You can improve your writing only by writing. Again and again. Every writing uh, uh, is a stage wherein you are going to refine even a six line poem. Six line short one stanza. Stanza. Your poem need not have many stanzas. You may have four stanzas, five stanzas, six stanzas, even ten stanzas, long, lengthy uh, uh, poem with ten or eleven stanzas. If it is going to be a ballad, if it is going to be a tale, yes, it may run, or it may have only fourteen lines. Five lines. I would give you as the first three lines of a modern poem. Okay. Can you tell me immediately what should be the next line? One line only. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. It's a modern, modern poem. Not poem of the classical period or classical Renaissance writers. It's a modern uh, prose poem. We call it prose poem. The poem is like this. Every Sunday, it's a poem. <laughs> no rhyme or anything like that. It's a poem by uh, not a so-called very well-known poet, but a poet. By vocation, he is a poet. Every Sunday, they went for walk together. Every Sunday, they went for walk together. If you want, I will give the title also. He treats her to ice cream. He treats her to ice cream. That is the title. He treats her to ice cream. Every Sunday, they went for a walk together. He, she, and the three children. 
these are the first two opening lines of a poem modern poem not the uh, a poem uh, which uses a lot of very big ideas with images etc a simple poem it's a modern prose poem i repeat every sunday every sunday they went for a walk together he she and the three children what can be the next to two lights you can say that you write it later now you can just say that i'll be able to hear you i'll give you two minutes or even three minutes you take your time what can be the next to two lines in this it's a poem i'll i'll zoom it in my next class i have not brought that book that book is in my library i have to go and get it every sunday they went for a walk together he she and the three children the title is he treats her to ice cream next line next two lines hello are you thinking are you with me there yes sir yes, yes sir we are with you yeah, 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 yeah. can you can you can you just write it so that i can read or you can say that you can say that first you can say oral hello are you writing no, no sir so okay. like like as you said every sunday ah. they went for a walk together very good this it's the world this can be like uh, the beginning of the poem yeah 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 these two yeah. like then uh, we we can write to reach uh, the climax after the climax we can uh, no, no, you give me the, the next two lines you give me the next two lines you just write something what can be time now i'm not talking about the stages there's a the beginning you can elaborate the beginning also you can elaborate on the beginning you can continue with those two lines what else could be added just one or two lines if you were if you were asked to complete that poem like prose poem how would you just next two lines i don't want you to complete the poem now itself i want you to just think of two lines to add to the beginning okay so we can say every sunday they want yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. they went for a walk together yeah. they, they treat so uh, well they remain uh, in a quiet place uh, no, i have the title the title is more or less a title has something to do with the theme okay he treats her to he treats her etia to ice cream ice cream you know yes 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 you know sir i think for so that we have to uh to think about it like to to like to take time before giving like uh two more sentences about it. every sunday they every sunday they went for a walk together they went for a walk together he she the three children well, the grammar of uh, the first line is very important 
that will give you a clue. Every Sunday, they went for a walk together. It's a personal experience. You get my point? Yes, yes. Now, what might be the next line, next one or two lines? Hello. Please. Ah, anybody? Okay, I'll give you one or two more lines from a different, not poem. I would say the title is Rain. Rain. Okay? Rain. Sir, see, uh, as, uh, I, I, as, as I can say that uh, 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 every Sunday. Ah, please. They very good. Very good. Very good. A, they went for a walk together. Ah. Like, he did so well. Okay, he, she, and the three children. Uh, yeah. Oh, the the lovers remain in the restaurant for a while. Third, third line, third line. Uh, yeah, the love the lovers remain in the restaurant for a while. You for, you can have a rhyme. You can have an end rhyme. You can you need not have any rhyming words at the end. You can have a post line also. Uh, yeah. I want you to write the possible next two lines. Yeah. Because it is good to spend time together after hard times. Yes, yeah. first they spend. Because it is good to spend time together after hard after? times. After? Hard times, hard times. After hard time. Yeah. To spend time after together. Spend time, time together together okay yeah. yes. after hard any other action huh every Sunday they walk for together to spend some time okay then yeah then the lovers remain in the restaurant good one, good one, good one. Good. you are hearing yeah beloved ah remain on, in the restaurant good, good. for a while beloved because Remain in the restaurant for a while. Oh, good, good. Because it is good to they spend remain the beloved time to for life. after they remain time. beloved for life. Is that right? Is that what okay. you are saying? No, I'm trying to I'm trying to to to, to create my own sentences. Okay, okay, so, okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Take your one time, no problem. Okay. Uh um I, I think. Uh, we are nearing time uh, today. Uh, that's all from me. Uh, you, you take it as a small kind of uh, work for the weekend. Okay. Or you can try your own hand on writing some poems. Right. Okay. Not necessarily. You should elaborate. Them. Any beginning has to be elaborated. That's what I was telling you. There's three stages. Beginning, middle, or climax, and the ending. Beginning has to be elaborated. Elaboration of some, uh, I can give you the title again, Rain. Okay. Uh, then, thank you. Shall we call it a day? It is only... Very able to follow yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, we were able to follow you, sir. Was it, was it clear? Was my uh, reading of the poems... Yes, yes, audible yes, to you? it was audible to us. Clear to you? Yes. Uh, uh, give me your feedback every now and then, or to the center. If you want me to say something different, please uh, okay, okay. put it there. 
Right? You can you have the right to Marie. tell us whether you are able to follow, uh, or if we have to add little more to whatever I, whatever we are saying. At least in my case, I don't know about others. Uh, you have got freedom to give me the feedback with all your suggestions. Okay, okay, sir. No problem. Don't worry about okay. this. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, have a happy weekend. Sorry, I got five more days to go. Have a happy week throughout. Okay. Today is Tuesday. Tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And Monday, the 13th of March, uh, I may be meeting you between 3 and 5. Between 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. Monday, the 13th, I may be meeting you for a session on your uh, book number three. Okay. In the meanwhile, okay. if you've got any questions to be asked, if you've got any doubts to be clarified, you can post them to this site. They'll be posting, uh, posting it on to me. I can find some answers. I can clarify your doubts. Okay. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you very much, sir. All the best. Thank you very much. It was, uh, uh, it was very nice of you to have interacted with me. I'm sure you two had the same uh, feeling. Of yes, sir. Time. We, 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 I, I appreciate your, I appreciate your valuable lecture. Well, we are here to, we are here to learn together. Okay. We are here to learn together. We are here to work together. Uh, I never consider myself as the teacher. I always consider myself as a fellow learner. Right. With these words, once again, I must thank you for your patient listening. Bye. Well, welcome, sir. Goodbye, sir. Bye. Bye. You got my name, right? Venkateshwaran, by name. My name is Venkateshwaran. Thank you very much. Welcome, sir. Shall we leave now, right? Sorry? Yeah, can we call oh, Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm calling it a day. OK, yeah. OK. Goodbye, sir. Uh, Goodbye. No, good night, good night, good night. Uh, by the way, out of curiosity, I'm thinking, what is the time zone? Uh, what is the uh, time difference between Indian and African time? Uh, 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 what's the time there now? Hello? Hello? Oh, they have gone. Sir, they have left, sir. Hello? Sir, it's Emma Malini. They have left, sir. Sir, they have left the meeting, sir. We can end the meeting. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir.